The American adaptation of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is no stranger to jokes and criticisms, most which come at the expense of censorship. From guns are bad, to nudity is bad, to religion is bad, all coming from a country that loves all three things very much. The jokes write themselves. The criticism, however, typically revolves around changes to dialogue, characterization, and plot. Changes to these effectively turn the source material into something else, so it's understandable why fans hate it. But it's also understandable why the censorship took place in the first place. The company that licensed the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is named for kids, after all. Paired with network standards on what can and can't be aired, there's no choice but to tailor the material to make it less nude, less crude, and less violent, even if those choices end up making the content worse. But one piece of censorship that I argue made the content better is the advent of the Shadow Realm. Yes, that's correct, the Shadow Realm is a creation, not of Zork, but of four kids as a means of, you guessed it, censorship. Censoring death to be exact. So instead of people threatening to kill each other over card games, they are instead threatening an eternal place of suffering over card games. I'll let you decide if that somehow sounds more kid friendly, but the focus of this video is to explain why this four kids creation actually makes the show better. So let's take a stroll through the Shadow Realm. I hear it's lovely this time of year. The first reason is that the Shadow Realm neatly ties the mystical nature of the entire plot. You have seven millennium items that have shared in distinct magical powers, a being born from the darkness of mankind, and spirit monsters known as Ka within each person that live within the spirit realm and can be summoned to fight each other. The Shadow Realm ties this lore neatly together. It serves as the abode of Zork, the place wherein shadow games take place and where cards come alive, a cross realm between the monster spirit realm and the human realm, and a unifying aspect of the millennium items where each has access to start shadow games and send or rescue people from the realm. Adding this layer to this magic is also far more believable as a consequence of losing duels. Death by card game while it gets your attention also sounds incredibly far-fetched, if not downright silly. The Shadow Realm serves as a more appropriate punishment because it fits the rest of the mystical theme that is monsters and magic. While most censorship in Yu-Gi-Oh! is meant to dilute certain aspects, the Shadow Realm is arguably a worse consequence than the thing 4Kids is trying to censor. In the manga, death isn't the only consequence of losing a Shadow game. These consequences, known as penalty games, come in a variety of forms, one of which is death, but others include catching on fire, shooting yourself with an actual handgun, manifestation of your greatest fears, various illusions where you think something is happening to you such as being eaten by monsters, and perhaps the most ironic to this video, the dreaded censorship vision. To the earlier point, the Shadow Realm serves as a catch-all realm where many of these penalty games could theoretically take place because even if a person isn't physically banished to the realm, their mind is, and ultimately should death be the penalty, the Shadow Realm won upset by the fact that most people would rather not be subjected to an eternity of torture over a quick death. The last reason is that death is really bad at its job, like wish everyone back to life with the Dragon Balls after everything is over level of bad at its job. It's a little too convenient that all the characters who fans love survive Shadow Games and all the characters who fans don't care about die. Case in point in Battle City where Bakuro kills Bones and his cronies. No one bats an eye here because fans don't care if they die and characters in-universe clearly don't notice. But when a character like Mai or Joey is in a shadow game, they are conveniently able to cheat death. In Mai's case, she's given 24 hours of torture before death, spoiler alert, she's rescued, and in Joey's case, Merrick just fails at it. The reason for this is that, at least in the source material, you simply can't kill these characters without upsetting a whole bunch of fans or disturbing the plot. And this makes using death as a consequence of losing a finicky thing where the excuse is simply that ah, the penalty for that game just didn't happen to be death. Enter the Shadow Realm, <laughs> Get it? which can serve as the ultimate punishment for each of these duels no problem. Why? Because the Shadow Realm doesn't mean you're dead, you're simply stuck in a place, a very horrible hellish place mind you, but still a place from where you can be rescued. This means that the stakes are still very high because again the Shadow Realm is arguably worse than death but the stakes are reversible. Maybe you preferred the source material every step of the way and maybe nostalgia is impacting my preferences, but personally I think sometimes dubs get things right and in Yu-Gi-Oh's case the Shadow Realm, while meant for kids, was in my opinion a great addition to the series. But what say you? Comment your thoughts and be sure to like and subscribe lest I send you to the Shadow Realm.